content aware tracing tool is an awesome tool in Photoshop. What it does is it automates tracing images by following the edges and it creates a vector pass in doing it. Just like it said, it'll detect edges and you just keep hovering until you are good with your selection and then you just click. That's it. Automatically adds anchor points. Now you'll notice if I want to add more, it's not connected to the path, right? So what I do is I hold shift and then it adds to the path. You can see also up here, it goes from this to this when I hold shift, right? If I hold alt, it'll automatically go to subtract from path. So if you want to remove it, you just hold alt. So if I want to continue with this path, I'll just hold shift. Keep going down. If you don't like it, just hit Control Z to undo. Um, if you just click this, you don't have to hold Shift. You can just keep going, and it'll stay on Add to a Path. Now it's got a lot of the same options as the regular pen tool and the curvature pen tool. Um, we got your presets here. You got your drop down where you can choose between a shape, a path, or pixels. Um, you got the make. You can make your path into a selection, into a mask, or into a shape. So you can make a selection. It'll bring up the make selection dialog box. You can edit the feather radius, um, have anti alias on there, and you can choose an operation. So you can make a new selection. If you already have a previous selection, you can add to it, subtract, or intersect with it. Click OK, and it just makes an active selection. Shape, you just click it, and it turns it into an actual shape layer. If you choose mask, it makes a vector mask over here. And you can always edit it, change it up, move it around. And this is a little different than a regular mask. You can see it's gray. It's not black and white. Um, that means it's a vector mask. And it goes with the path. And then you got your path operations, alignment, and arrangement. Operations is like the Pathfinder options in Adobe Illustrator. You got new layer, combine shapes, subtract from a shape, intersect exclude overlapping shapes and then merge shape components alignment you got your align and distribute settings um, you can also align it to a selection or to the actual canvas itself and then arrangement this is just think of these as pieces of paper or layers um, bring to front just brings your layer all the way to the top or the front uh, bring shape forward, just moves it up one layer. Backward, just moves it back one layer. And then send it back, obviously just brings it all the way to the bottom or the back. Path operations, this obviously just changes the pixels and the color of the path. Um, default, you're going to have it set to one pixel and blue. That's how path normally looks. Um, I explained these a little bit, but this is just create path from detected edges, add to it, or subtract from it. Um, then we have some tracing modes. You got detailed, normal, or simplified. You can just play around with these uh, to get the best selection. Usually I'll start out with detailed, and I'll look and see how it's tracing, see if it's doing what I want it to do. If it's not getting it, maybe I'll go down to normal. See if it uh, detects the edges a little better. And bring it to simplified finally. Um, sometimes simplified gets it better than detailed. It's all in the actual picture and the pixels itself. But usually normal will do it. Then we got the detail slider. If you bring this all the way up. It's going to detect a lot more edges than usual. 
you know, be careful using this. You know, it might mess you up. It might help you out. But you can see any edge it detects. And the edge basically is just a change in colors of the pixels, the brightness. Um, it's just a difference in one pixel to the next, right? So you can see here, it detects these little edges of these, this white line here. You know, it'll detect the edge of this. Um, then last but not least, for the path options, we got auto trim and align edges. Then if you go down to shape, um, same thing, you got your presets, your shape path pixel drop down. If I choose fill, you can choose a color. You can choose a gradient or a pattern to go in there. You can also choose this color picker and change the color to whatever you want. Also has some options here. You can have a new swatch preset, rename the swatch, delete it. You can copy or paste the fill, change the thumbnail size. This is right here. This is the thumbnail where you see the preview of it. Uh, then you can append the default swatches, import some swatches, export them, or export swatches for Adobe Exchange. So that's the fill drop down. Then you got stroke. And stroke is just the outline of the path or the shape. Just zoom in so you can see. This just same thing. You can change the color. You can change, uh, pick a swatch that you already have. A gradient or a pattern and also if you choose this with the red line through it that means you have no stroke uh, same thing with this box you got the color picker and the swatch options after that we got the stroke size you can make it bigger smaller then we have stroke options this is a drop down where you can change between a straight line, dashes, or dots. And then you have your align, caps, and corners. When you hit more options here, or if you hit here and come down to more options, it opens the stroke dialog box. And this is where you can control it a little bit more. With the alignment, this just shows where the path is compared to the stroke. This is at the center. You see the path goes down the middle of the stroke. Inside, the stroke is on the inside of the path. And outside, same concept, the stroke is on the outside of the path. Usually I just leave it at center. Caps are for the end of paths. Like if this wasn't connected and it was just like a U, this would change the end caps. You got butt, round, or square. Corners, we got miter, which is what it usually is set to by default. Then we got round. It just rounds off the corners. And then we got bevel. It just cuts off the corners. Um, dash line, if you click this box, you can change how many pixels is for each dash and then how many pixels for the gap in between it. So if I brought this down to, let's just bring this down to 0.5, right? And then we put the gap at one. You can see each dash is 0.5 pixels long, and then each space in between them is one pixel. Now you can keep going and put up to three dashes and three gaps if you want, but I just leave it like this because it keeps it nice and even. You can hit save to save that stroke. And then it'll appear down here where it's saved. And that's the stroke dialog box. Uh, and last thing for the stroke options, obviously you can save, delete, copy, or paste a stroke. Next, we got the width and the height. Pretty self-explanatory. If you increase the width, it makes it wider. Increase the height makes it taller uh, you can link them together and increase it and it'll just increase both at the same time after that we got path operations path alignment path arrangement uh, then we got path options 
obviously this is just the thickness of the actual path this is not the stroke guys this is the actual path itself so you can see the line in between the stroke this just changes the thickness and the color of that if i want to change it magenta you can i just leave it blue default and set to one pixel rubber band this is where if you're clicking here you can see the preview where the line's gonna go if you don't have rubber band then you don't see that preview you just put your path wherever you want it i always keep this on you need it if you're going to be doing handles and curves right you want to see where that curve is thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one